Good afternoon. So we are ready to start. If you uh, don't mind, take a seat and, and we're ready for you. So, bonjour, my name is uh, Anne-Cécile Defe, and I uh, will be uh, facilitating uh, this meeting today. On behalf of uh, CIHR, I would like to thank you for uh, being here. And I will start with a few uh, housekeeping items. So, on each table, there are sign-up sheets, if you don't mind uh, filling them. And you also have the agenda of the meeting and uh, the question we will ask uh, later. Uh, for your information, this session will be recorded and uh, some picture will be taken. I can see uh, Suzette from here. Already, uh, she already started the uh, picture. picture. Um, la session va se dérouler en français, uh, mais n'hésitez pas, si vous avez des questions ou des commentaires, vous pouvez les faire en français, il n'y a, y a, a pas de problème avec ça. The objective of the uh, meeting today is to consult with you the HIV community to develop the new uh, CHR HIV STBBI strategic plan. First, uh, Dr. Charu Kochik, the um, scientific director of the CIHR Institute of, Human, um, <laughs> Institute of Infection and Immunity, will give you some context, and then we would like to have your opinion on several uh, topics. Before uh, giving the floor to uh, Dr. Kochik, I would like to briefly introduce CIHR representative uh, present with us today. So, we have uh, Geneviève boilly larouche a strategic lead over there at the uh, Institute, Jessica Mankowski, manager, major initiatives, Suzette Dos Santos, um, she's project lead, um, major initiative, and Nadia Larouche, advisor, program design and delivery. Dr. Charles. Thanks, Cecile. So, I uh, welcome everybody. Good afternoon. Uh, and uh, I'm glad that it's going to be a well attended session because this is where we are kicking off our uh, strategic planning for the HIV STBBI uh, strategic plan for the next five years. As some of you know, I was just talking to Eric and he said, Is it that time already? Because he was actually part of Chirac when the last uh, action or last strategic plan was being done. So. Uh, so it is uh, about a year and a half, but uh, we want to get it done, started in time and finish it so that there's good overlap in the existing plan and the upcoming plan. Uh, do I start the slide set from here? So if you want to get the slide set going. So what I'm going to do uh, today is to uh, basically go through for about 10 minutes sort of the context, set the context of what you're going to uh, be, you know, sort of answering questions and uh, indicating your priorities. I just want to set the uh, frame for framework for that. So, as soon as the slides are ready. Perfect. So, uh, as I said, we're just starting off. This is the first time, so you're sort of the guinea pigs for this. We are trying out and seeing how the questionnaire is going to go, how the questions are going to go. Uh, and then uh, you will be hearing from us over next uh, eight months or so uh, because uh, we are going to set out a survey. There's going to be focus groups. Uh, we will be going to other meetings as well because this is an STBBI and HIV. So this is our kickoff at the HIV meeting. There's an international STBBI meeting that's later this summer. Uh, we will be uh, going there as well to hear from the STBBI community what they would like to see. Uh, so um, I can promise that we will be hearing everybody, but I can't promise that everything that you say will be in the strategic plan. I think most people know that, right? So we are gathering consensus, and hopefully that consensus you will see reflected in the strategic plan. Uh, and Cecile, who has done the HIV strategic plan before, uh, we went, chose to go with her because she's quite experienced at this. So um, I would like to start by acknowledging the land on which we are gathering. This is uh, Treaty 6 territory and the traditional territories of the Cree people and the homeland of the Métis Nation. So uh, we are grateful for them for sharing their land and their resources with us. Uh, 
is it as faded as it's on this? No, hopefully it's better. Uh, so the federal initiative, as many of you are aware, uh, you know, most of you have received some sort of priority funding through the federal initiative, has been around for almost 20 years. Uh, it was initiated by the federal government as a priority in the late 1990s, around 98. Uh, and then CIHR came on board with it around 2001. Uh, and it's a key element of the Government of Canada's comprehensive approach to addressing HIV AIDS in Canada and globally. Uh, it provides funding for prevention and support programs to prior key priority populations, uh, as well as research, surveillance, public awareness, and evaluation. And we've highlighted research because that's part of our mandate. So the actual uh, federal initiative funding is about $80 million, and CHR gets about $21 million of those for specifically for the purpose of pushing the research envelope within Canada and globally. So the partners in this, and you'll see that on the right side of the panel, uh, public health agency is sort of the front-facing agency that actually receives the direct funding, and then they redirect portions of those fundings that are designated to uh, Corrections uh, Canada, Indigenous Health Canada, and CIHR. Uh, so the four partners work together. We all have our different mandates, uh, CIHR is being the research mandate. Um, and the, uh, the CIHR research initiative, uh, the HIV AIDS initiative through CIHR, uh, is basically, like I said, responsible for the research component. Uh, and as you can see on the bottom, uh, the $21 million for about last 20 years have been directed through these four research funding streams. Uh, and many of you, the biomedical team grants just got announced. So the biomedical and clinical research team through which we distribute a lot of the cure and prevention funding. Uh, as well as some CHVI vaccine funding, et cetera, that was also in that biomedical and clinical research. Uh, the health services and population health research, a lot of the implementation grants and RFAs have come out through this portion. The community-based research program, I think all of you are very aware that Canada is a front leader in the community-based research, mainly to 20 years of investment in the CBR uh, stream of funding. Uh, and then finally, the CTN, which is the biggest single investment uh, from within this $21 million. Uh, and uh, I'm sure, I don't know if Anise is in the room, but as you all probably know, that the CTN just got renewed funding this year. Uh, the announcement should be happening pretty soon. We are figuring out the date for that. So the official uh, announcement should be coming, but it is already on the CIHR website in the announcements. Uh, so the uh, existing plan, which was uh, initiated in 2015 and runs for five years, so it'll finish in about a year from now, in 2020, sets out three strategic directions for HIV AIDS related research, capacity building, and knowledge translation. And these three strategic directions include the uh, discovery research, mobilizing research, uh, evidence and promoting leadership in stakeholder engagement and accountability for uh, HIV research. The whole plan is actually online if you want to have a refresh. Uh, we also have some copies of it. I think uh, Suzette told me earlier that uh, if you go to the CIHR booth, we actually have some copies, some couple of short printouts, but uh, uh, there's also a full copy if you want to take a look at it. But we have put the website there if you want to go back and have refresh your memories about the strategic plan. Uh, so these were the main priorities, and there was a whole list of things that were underneath it. And some of these are listed here, under which we have provided funding, and the, some of the funding initiatives are listed here. So in the biomedical clinical research, the mucosal immunology grants, the uh, vaccine development, cure, comorbidities, uh, prevention, and healthy living. Um, and we always participate in priority announcements so that we can pick up grants that don't quite make it for full funding. Uh, the health services and population health, there have been RFAs specifically in the HIV implementation science, uh, the centers for health services and population health, comorbidity, uh, and uh, again, PA, uh, PAs are there. Uh, in the community-based research, the community defined priorities which have included prevention, stigma, cultural safety, uh, and this, is, this particular stream actually has two very strong um, um, uh, streams in which we distribute the funding. There's a separate indigenous stream and there is a general or non-indigenous stream that's there. 
Uh, and finally, the CTN, like I said, it's the biggest clinical network specifically devoted to HIV and STBBI research across Canada. Uh, and all of, all of these teams, on top of these teams, we are uh, uh, giving out every year and sometimes twice a year travel awards, planning and dissemination, and project grants uh, within the HIV. So that $20 million envelope does all of this work based on the strategic priorities that were determined in 2015. So what's next? Where are we going with this? Uh, so the things, the considerations that I want you to think about is first of all, as many of you know, and I've had one-on-one -on -one discussions, this was there you know, last year, some of you knew this was happening. The, in 2017, the uh, federal initiative uh, was changed from just HIV to STBBI, so sexually transmitted and blood-borne infections. The framework was announced in 2017. Uh, public health agency, along with its partners, including CIHR, has been working to uh, put together an implementation plan. Uh, the announcement should be happening within weeks. I thought it was next week, but now I'm being told it's probably going to be more towards the end of May. Uh, but the action plan is ready. Uh, it's going through final checks and signatures. So it should be announced probably by the end of May. Uh, so what that means is that, um, and I think hopefully most of you have had a look at it. Uh, it's online, again, the link is here. We have some copies uh, at the booth if you wanna take a look at some paper copies of it or hard copies of it. Uh, and the federal framework basically uh, indicates that it has three goals to reduce the number of new cases of STBBIs in Canada, uh, increase access to diagnosis, treatment, and care, uh, and reduce the social and health inequities, stigma, and discrimination that create vulner vulnerabilities to STBBI. So these are the main three goals within the Pan-Canadian Action Framework, uh, and the action plan basically executes the implementation strategy for these three goals. Uh, and within that, uh, this is a bit of a complex uh, slide. Uh, I'm gonna walk you through some of the highlights of it. So the core pillars in the action plan are surveillance, research, knowledge mobilization, monitoring and evaluation. So these are the basic core pillars. Uh, and the vision uh, which the action plan outlines is that Canada will become a country where new cases of STBBI are rare, and when they do occur, these infect, uh, those infected will be diagnosed in a timely manner and have access to high quality, culturally and sex and gender appropriate care, free from stigma and discrimination. So you can see that it, it basically encompasses all of those uh, goals and uh, um, uh, pillars that you know, the action plan will be focused on. Uh, and the goal is, like I said, the three goals to reduce uh, stigma, to uh, reduce the numbers, and to increase access and diagnosis. Uh, and the core components within the action plan are, uh, of course, the treatment cascade, the treatment, initiation of care and treatment, uh, ongoing care and support, along with prevention. Uh, and then there's the guiding principles that run throughout the action plan in terms of making sure that there's equity, there's, uh, you know, the stigma is dealt with, it's a person-centered uh, approach, involvement of people living with STBBI, so pretty much the same framework that was there for HIV is now carried over to STBBIs as well. So this is the changing con context of, um, uh, you know, where the uh, action plan will be and as a federal government agencies with a specific envelope of money, that's what our mandate is now. So um, what I will say is that, uh, and I know that I've heard from many of you and when we had the Chirac meeting, I got asked that question that, uh, but is this not still HIV money from the treasury board? So. Uh, in the last six months when we were asked to put together our department plan and FAC basically told us to include STBBIs and we also had performance evaluations which we are accountable for every year which included STBBIs, we actually went back to FAC and said, you know, where's the change in the treasury board item, line item. So we actually took it all the way back up to treasury board and got some clarifications from treasury board which basically indicated to us and I have the, 
actual language here, and I want to make sure I'm saying it right. The Treasury Board confirmed a new submission was not required to expand the federal initiative funding to include STBBIs. The rationale was that the CIHR's grant for research projects and personnel support terms and conditions are broad enough to include STBBIs without requiring a formal expansion in those terms and conditions. In addition, CIHR was advised by Treasury Board to introduce performance measures for STBBI funding in our departmental plan. So just want to reassure you that we've done our homework. We've actually gone all the way back to Treasury Board to say under what mandate are we required to increase this framework uh, and follow this action plan. So in other words, it's here, it's now, we have to do this. Uh, and what we will be asking you and your advice is how to do it, because the pace and what we choose to integrate and how is what we can actually do this at our own pace. So that's what we are uh, going to, that's one of the two things that we'd like to consult with you today. Uh, the other thing that I want to bring to your attention is the CIHR strategic plan, 2020 to 25. You, hopefully, if most of you look at your email and things that are coming through CIHR, you probably got a message from the, the president of CIHR, Mike Strong, uh, asking you to participate in an online survey uh, to ask what you think about CIHR's priorities. Uh, and there's a whole, I think there's seven or eight different uh, parts of the survey that you can actually choose which questions you want to answer and what you want to uh, answer about. So if you haven't done it, highly encourage you to do that. So the uh, CIHR uh, plan that is being developed is um, the way uh, Mike Strong is looking at it is that he'd like to have a vision of sort of a 25, 30 year vision of where Canadian research should be in 25, 30 years from now so that we can start following those footsteps. The actual plan will be a five-year plan, but the vision is actually much longer term. Uh, and that's needed because for things that are on the horizon, like climate change that has to be incorporated uh, into any kind of research that we're doing, or artificial intelligence, which is here now, uh, we have to have that long-term vision to be able to see what we are going to be able to do in the next five years. Uh, I'm not saying that these are on the strategic plan, it's just part of the consultation that, uh, you know, will be with that long-term vision. Uh, so these are sort of the guiding questions. If you go on the CIHR website, you will see these questions, and the idea is basically, one, to see how we can position Canadian research and Canadian researchers at a global platform. How can we show excellence that we are good and we are actually amazing? Uh, so that's what we would like to, uh, you know, see and envision how we can do that. Uh, how can we make it our uh, Canadian research more impactful, the one that funded through CIHR? Uh, how can CIHR work with you and your organizations so that we can help you deliver your mandate? Uh, and also in terms of our own benchmark and learning, because as you know, most of you probably have seen now that the foundation grants were canceled. Uh, and that's a learning experience for CIHR because it was a new experiment. It didn't work out. There were very clear indications that it was not an equitable program. And based on that, Science Council determined that it was not a program that we could support in the way that it was running. So that announcement came through you know, a couple a month ago, six weeks ago. So uh, even though we are a federal government department, uh, we are a learning organization. We learn from our experiences and we want to do better. So the strategic plan for CIHR will be, uh, and they will be coming for consultations to different locations to your university. So we're not going to do a lot of CIHR as a whole strategic plan, just some information for your, uh, for your uh, knowledge to know that this is happening. Uh, we'll run from this spring all the way to December. There'll be uh, online engagement, cons uh, consultations, uh, consensus workshop once we have a pretty a much better idea of where, um, you know, what's coming up through the pipeline in terms of priorities. Uh, and then a national health research summit to basically bring back those ideas and what the priorities that have been identified. Uh, and this is a slide which basically tells you that you can go complete the survey. Uh, I always tell people that, you know, I say that to my lab and I'm having lab meetings that participate and, and you know, if, if it's uh, elections, go vote because if you don't, then you don't have any say in the process. So same thing for trainees and same thing for everybody else. Go take the survey, put your opinions in there because if you don't participate, you know, what happens is decided by other people other than you. 
So, uh, so what's next? So finally coming to our, our own action plan, which is what we are going to actually be talking about today. So we are, as I said, uh, we are kicking off at CAR conference, the consultation process. Uh, please visit the booth if we don't have enough time to go through everything and everybody's opinions. We are listening. We actually have the questionnaires ready. So stop by at the booths. Yeah, I will be there tomorrow morning and this evening, tomorrow. Uh, it's on my schedule. So I, I will be there. The staff will be there. We'll be manning the booths. Uh, and we will be there to listen and, uh, you know, get your feedback. Uh, you can fill out the surveys, uh, and we will take it all, all back and present it to Cecile. Uh, there will be online engagement, and then there will be the Chirac engagement. We are having a Chirac meeting coming up in uh, June, and there's going to be another one in fall. Uh, so we are continuing to consult with Chirac on what comes up as priorities. Uh, and then, like I said, in the summer, in July, we'll actually be going to the uh, Sexually Transmitted Infection uh, Congress to get some consultations done there as well, and then that will be followed by focus groups and one-on-one uh, -on -one, uh, teleconferences with people. Uh, uh, I think we, will sh we should have a preliminary report that should be ready by early next year, uh, and then we'll spend a bit of time making sure that our STBBI plan, HIV STBBI plan, is actually aligned with the CIHR's overall goals and plans, uh, because that alignment is important, so we are going to go through that exercise. Uh, and then uh, what do we want to do today? So there are two main questions that we are bringing to you today. Uh, given that the current budget is still at $21 million, uh, first of all, we want to hear from you what are the emerging priorities for HIV? What have we done well? Where do we still need to build capacity? What are the emerging priorities in the HIV field? So that's number one, and Cecile's gonna have four or five questions that are related to that. And part two, regarding the implementation strategy for including STBBIs in the HIV funding envelope. You know, a lot of people already work in the uh, STBBI area. There, I know that at CAR I hear every year, you know, the people who work in, uh, in hepatitis and other people at a community level the ASOs and many of the community organizations already deal with the same priority populations. Uh, but we'd like to hear to, you know, what, are, what do you think should be our priorities and how we integrate STBBIs into HIV. We want to do it in a way that's comfortable uh, and at the right pace for our HIV community. So that's what we want to hear from everybody. And I'm going to let Cecile take over. And uh, as questions and discussions come up, I'm happy to answer questions and participate in the discussion. Thank you. So we'll start with the, uh, the questions. Uh, can I have the uh, presentation back, please? Perfect. So the first question is, um, is uh, what are the emerging priority research topics in uh, HIV AIDS at the national and international level? So there are three microphones over there, one, two, three. So just uh, think about it and come to the mic, please. Any volunteer to start? Questions so everybody had time to think about it, done their homework first. <laughs> okay, so I'm free to decide then. So, so we have, so <laughs> we have a volunteer, Mike, okay. number well, one. To, to start, so Jean Pierruti from McGill. So in HIV, we still don't know how the system cannot control HIV, and by uh, better understanding how it works we can improve HIV and other uh, immune-related disease. So I think that still HIV defeats host immune response, and I think it remains a key priority of this unique virus that damage, paralyzes the immune system on the cell being infected and also on uninfected cells. So it's still a mystery how big the damage can be, and with uh, antiretroviral therapy, only it's a partial improvement, and there is a, a gut damage that's uh, 
flow up uh, continue to stimulate HIV, so there is a second line of damage. And I think to understand that for HIV, but for other chronic viral disease and likely autoimmunity and cancer, seems to work a bit together. And what we can learn from HIV will uh, nurture, help other system, and we should conversely learn from oncology and autoimmunity. So I think the, the first cause of the disease, the immune damage, remain, I think, a key priority. Merci beaucoup. Any other comment on uh, our remark or on this uh, question? Yes. Uh, Ekaterina Dadachova, University of Saskatchewan. Um, on the front of HIV cure, I think uh, it would be great if CHR uh, could um, put some emphasis on treatment of neuro HIV and AIDS because I think in many cases it's sort of forgotten area, but it becomes clear from the uh, preclinical studies and also clinical experience that there is no uh, cure of HIV without addressing the neuro HIV AIDS because HIV enters the brain during the first week of infection and antiretrovirals either do not enter the brain or sometimes they, if they do, they make things even worse. And it has been shown that there is a receding of HIV from the brain into those patients who uh, could be considered functionally cured. And I think that's a big area how to address the neuro HIV for basic research and also for clinical trials. Thank you. Thank you. So, so you, you, you will, oh, so, sorry, the, the light is, uh, is a little strong, so. No, no worries. <laughs> My name is Oralia Gomez Ramirez. I work at the VC Center for Disease Control. Um, I think that one key area that could be explored is investigating how HIV AIDS research uh, can help strengthen the healthcare systems um, and the public healthcare um, systems as well and at the global level, how from HIV AIDS research, uh, we, we contribute to the goal of achieving health for all around the world. Thank you. Yes. Gilbert Raymond, Concordia University. Uh, just a first reaction, it's like, wow, the population mix that we will have. Do you have a bowl, salad bowl that is large enough to contain all the trans, marginalized, and non-marginalized people in the same bowl? Because it's, as a goal, it's like unachievable if you don't cut somewhere. Or you cut because you privilege uh, a marginalized population and you, you deal with what they have or you go for a general population and you forget those that are, that are the source and the interest into HIV. So I see it as a really e not easy problematic to reconcile in some, some one concept. Thank you. You, you want to uh, comment? Yeah, no, that's a great point that you're bringing up. And, you know, we want to hear, and I would, I'd, uh, challenge people to say that I think we've been pretty successful in addressing both some basic fundamental issues in HIV, but also focusing a lot in priorities. So it's, it, it takes a while and it takes a lot of effort, but I think we are probably pretty good at funding both sort of basic biomedical issues, but also focusing on priorities and priority populations. So it's a balance and it's always a challenge, but if you don't hear priorities for both, then we don't know where to start. So, you know, your advice to us should include everything that you think is important. And the more we hear about things, the more we'll be able to find consensus and what should come up as a priority. Is that fair? Oh, it's clear. <laughs> it's totally clear that it won't be clear in the, in the research grants that we'll submit. This is where we will have a problem. Well, we're not talking about research grant funding right now. We're talking about forming overall priorities. You know, so the funding opportunities will be based on those priorities. So we are asking your help to help us form those priorities. Yeah. 
Access to health care and services could be a, a good deal a question that I don't see in your plan yet. Okay. Thank you. Yes. Hi. Good afternoon. Um, so I, I think on a very pragmatic level, thinking about emerging uh, or, or an emerged priority research area and nationally and domestically would be looking at the quality of data collection. I work with the Indigenous community and the quality of data in Canada is probably some of the best in the world and it's not good enough. So certainly an area but we'd really appreciate more focus and attention and effort and, and appreciate some trainees who are interested in working with community to, uh, to work on that. And, and perhaps on a slightly more political note following on Jaber's comments, um, health economic research, if we want to talk about elimination by 2030, we need an investment, a significant investment in our research, in our prevention, in our community-based response. And so the more evidence we can produce with research to be able to fuel that, to be able to say, what can we do with the existing budget for this? We, we, we won't reach elimination if we don't invest. And it's age-old wisdom that we know that uh, prevention will be worth far more or cost far less than cure will. So I'd really like to see somebody help us to uh, put into the hands of decision makers the evidence required to say invest the, the millions or billions of dollars needed now to save so much more down the road. Thanks. Thank you. So like, like we said earlier, you will have the opportunity to uh, comment later. So come visit us at the booth and, and you'll have the questionnaire. So we'll go to the uh, second question. So it's, it's, um, it's almost the same question, but we want to, to have an idea more specifically the research priorities that will help Canada to uh, meet the global target of eliminating HIV as a concern by 2030. So do you have any additional comments on, on that? Cecile, you want to move the slide forward? We, we go? Okay. Oops. Sorry. Okay, so we are, we will, uh, oh, oh, sorry, please go. Um, Community-based researcher here. Um, I think the, um, to better understand the access, real and a, quali um, a real and of quality access to treatment um, and care. Yeah, I understand that it's really complex in Canada because everyone do it its own way, but better to understand how uh, the people are accessing to the care and to treatment. I think it's a, it's an important, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Yes. Hello, Bonjour. Um, I'm a person living with HIV, so I think um, one of the research priorities would be, uh, it would be great uh, for the government to really invest in people living in HIV and uh, key affected populations uh, to. Uh, become researchers to find ways to really effectively and meaningfully participate in research. Um, on the global level, as we know, there are um, you know, a shrinking in civil society spaces for um, you know, groups to dialogue, to really come together. So I think you know, investing in, um, echoing what Renee said, um, investing in the health economics to see how we can actually um, invest in the uh, communities uh, to, to really create this, um, uh, the best return, uh, rates of return uh, in investments, uh, be it on the health front and, and, and the treatment access front. Uh, so we're not, um, we're not trying to catch up on the response. We're trying to you know, um, lead the way to end the attempt. Epidemic. Thank you. Thank you. Merci. Yes, please. Hi, thank you. <clears throat> My name is Nathan Lachowski from the University of Victoria. Um, I'd like to add a comment around a focus on uh, social and health inequities. I think that's particularly important thinking about actually being able to reach these targets. Um, yeah, and I, and I guess thinking about that, I think a little bit further is around implementation. And I think we have a natural opportunity in Canada given 
the comment that was made, that where we have very different policies of access to various kinds of um, prevention and care. And so I think investing in cross-provincial work that really helps to show and demonstrate where universal access to treatments for HIV are highly effective um, policies, I think will help us actually reach these targets. So I think opportunities that help connect us across our jurisdictions and evaluate those policies um, using a lens around social and health inequities. Thank you. Hi. I'm Ellen Cote from the University of British Columbia. Um, the area that I would like to see more research in is um, the long-term health of HIV-exposed uninfected children. Now that we have great success in preventing vertical transmission, um, the HEU population is rapidly growing in some countries. You know, one child out of five has been exposed to antiretrovirals. And there's evidence of metabolic, endocrine, and other um, alterations for which we have no idea what the long-term consequence will be. So the long-term health of HEU is something that I think should be a priority. Thank you. My name is Clement George. I'm actually at, <clears throat> from the University of the West Indies in Barbados. But building on this uh, comment, <clears throat> we know that uh, the uh, social determinants of health, all of that makes individuals more vulnerable to HIV. Therefore, um, <clears throat> perhaps the IHR can think about um, research or certain priorities that look at that sort of holistic area that not just one specific issue, whether it's drug use or, or something else, but what makes individuals more at risk? Poverty, um, lack of education, you know, um, social isolation, more holistically rather than um, just uh, piece, have a piecemeal approach to it that might help end HIV in Canada. Thank you. So we will move to another aspect now. So what are the challenges we are facing in HIV AIDS research in Canada? I will read it in French so it will give you a little more time. Quels sont les défis auxquels nous sommes confrontés dans le domaine de recherche du VIH SIDA au Canada? Sorry for a second intervention, but uh, one difficulty for clinical trial and access to medication, according to certain provinces, the access of drug is not the same. So it's very hard to have a pan-Canadian uh, study, uh, and each uh, ethics have to go to different uh, level. Uh, there is no one global uh, acceptation level for all Canada, as it can be done in uh, certain European countries. So that's a difficulty and time and lack of time where other countries or the groups can have an earlier result. So the second is the lack of a Canadian industry or startup on, in medication. We are not in Switzerland. And it's very hard to have new compound. And generally, uh, the countries that generate the compound do the study either in his country or in USA. And then to have a site or to be involved in Canada is structurally uh, difficult. And also, uh, as I say, for the ethics, still it's very long. There is not a, a global uh, consensus or one uh, like a CHR approval for all Canada will be a great uh, if CHR was a, an entity, a juridical entity. And we have to go through all uh, steps of each center. So that is a long, costly, and slow us down compared to other countries. So I think that for me, the three uh, difficulties, there is other strengths, but uh, we focus on difficulty of, of being in Canada. Merci pour cette seconde intervention. 
Please. Hi, Sharon Walmsley from Toronto. Yeah, money is the biggest challenge. Uh, but to um, reiterate what uh, Jean-Pierre is saying is, is the randomized clinical trial is really a, an important way to demonstrate uh, an effect of a new therapy and have impact. But doing those has become increasingly challenging because of the costs and the hurdles associated with it. Uh, finding ways to have a universal across Canada consent for HIV clinical trials would save so many people so many different uh, uh, times and, and boards going through all of these processes, much like the cancer programs have available to them. I think the other thing is uh, career support. And in today's world, it is very hard for us to try and convince young people that this is the area that they want to study when having career support in mid-career particularly is very challenging. And to be able to maintain a, a position as a clinician or whatever in a university uh, to earn your salary doesn't leave you enough time to do the research that we need to do. Thank you for your comments. Yeah, I can address a little bit of what uh, Sharon was saying. So, uh, you know, with the CIHR strategic plan, overall plan, uh, there's recognition that uh, the some of the career support plans or uh, programs that were there were scrapped a while ago. So there's a lot of discussion around Science Council, and uh, what we're discussing is really uh, the reason why there should be things that should be coming out pretty soon because there's a good consensus on some of those, uh, including some of the uh, professional people being allowed to continue their career, but what we are really focusing on is trying to develop programs that address a career across the whole, uh, or uh, uh, capacity building across the whole career path. So starting from master's level to PhD, to postdoc, health system fellowships, uh, early career investigators, and including mid-career, uh, because there's clear recognition that uh, uh, you know, the past five or six years have been very hard on mid-career investigators, so there needs to be incentive to um, bring people back and allow the people who are there to be retained. So there are uh, programs, I think we're going through the exercise of what's the best way and programs that will encourage capacity building. So you can expect that there's going to be uh, quite a bit of emphasis on uh, capacity building. Uh, you know, please answer the survey because we hear constantly differing points of view. Uh, from people because when the foundation grant was scrapped and Adrian Moda was on uh, doing the webinar, you know, he got a lot of comments saying scrap everything else, just put everything into project grants. That's it. That's all we want from CIHR. Uh, we don't want, you know, any strategic funding, no capacity building, just put everything into project grants. So uh, everybody needs to have a say because there are definitely people with very strong opinions on where the money should go. So the more people that participate, you know, again, the consensus comes out to where people actually say something. So if you care, you should go and actually participate in the survey so that you can have your voice heard. So capacity building is definitely at the Science Council. There's a lot of support for that. Uh, and we are working through the different programs that can address that. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, Albert McLeod from Winnipeg, uh, Two-Spirited People, Manitoba. Uh, there was a, a media release uh, article in the media about uh, BC in terms of uh, people who were late presenters. The title was Missed Opportunities. And I think they identified in BC there was about 240 people who were late presenting with HIV, likely in the AIDS stage, who were missed in the system in terms of not being diagnosed by their care provider as having some, uh, something symptomatic of HIV disease, end-stage HIV disease. And I think this week Saskatchewan also uh, reported the same thing about late presentation, uh, cases of HIV in Canada. And I know in Manitoba in 2016 we had 72 cases of late presentation. So I think one of the challenges for HIV research is why in a first world country are people not getting access to proper HIV testing? And that why are people uh, showing up for their first HIV diagnosis being in the end stage of HIV disease in Canada? And I know uh, some of those cases are indigenous people. 
So I think the, the really the research really needs to be leveraged to, to prevent this uh, from happening in Canada, where we are a first world country, yet we still have cases of people who are being missed by healthcare professionals when they are symptomatic of having uh, late stage HIV disease. Thank you. Yes. Hi there. Um, I'm also speaking as a person uh, living with HIV. Uh, to uh, Charu's uh, you know, comments about capacity building, that really triggered something for me. Um, uh, and, and, and Christian's comments as well about uh, building the capacity of people with lived experience to uh, work as researchers. One of the areas that's of great interest to me is I'm uh, working as a community person on a number of different research teams in a variety of tracks, I, I might add, ranging from basic science right through to CBR, is that I think that we are going to increasingly have an opportunity or should create opportunities to build capacity among community people like myself and younger people. Uh, <laughs> that's everybody else, um, <laughs> to uh, participate on, on research teams. So uh, right now I'm part of a small group uh, working uh, within the uh, SPORE uh, group. That's the strategy for patient-oriented research uh, to produce a, a guidance document. It's, it's actually uh, you know, a, a, an extensive uh, booklet that uh, looks at the issues um, f f related to um, the ethics of working as a community people on research teams. So I think there's a real opportunity there as well to um, take the uh, guidance that we are creating and to use it to really build capacity capacity among community people to uh, participate on research teams. It may also be a way of helping to overcome some of the recruitment issues uh, that I think Sharon referred to uh, around the consent form. Thank you. Thanks, Ron. So I was just going to add that actually this has come up at Chirac a few different times. So uh, hands up if you're a Chirac member so people can actually see who the Chirac members are. Is Keith here? Okay. Do Chirac members want to stand up? So because they are also your representatives and we're actually going to have a meeting in a few weeks time. Marnie, Keith, Jean-Pierre, is there, in, uh, that's it? Hmm. Oh, there's Joanne. Thank you, Joanne. So, uh, you know, please talk to us, but also talk to the Chirac members because we are going to be consulting them on an ongoing basis. And community scholar event uh, issue did come up in Chirac a couple times now. I've only had two Chirac meetings since I took on. So that's on our agenda. Uh, and it's a really good suggestion. And, uh, you know, the more we hear about it, the more likely it's going to come up as a priority. Please. The research that is needed to answer it straightforward. You know we are maybe at something like 85, 85, 85 of the 1990-90 target. We have blind spots. We have our own ignorance to explore. This means that we couldn't work on that without emphasizing more community-based research, looking at blind sports, uh, or outreaching these people that were always felt excluded or that never felt concerned with HIV. The challenge at this level is higher than any, most of the research that we have to do, that we are doing now, curing and finding a res resolutions of problems and things like that. But we don't know who, we don't know where, we don't know how these people can be reached. So this is where we need also big means so that this 15, 15, 15 that is left over does not become the bomb that you, click, that you fear for more, for more than four years. Thank you. Yeah, hi. hi, Marina Klein from McGill University in Montreal. So it's more, I think, of an existential issue that's come up, I think, worldwide, and we um, address this to some extent through the International AIDS Society, uh, which I'm going to 
governing council member, about um, what HIV faces uh, in an era where there's a plenty of pressure because people feel that we've already achieved uh, elimination of most of HIV AIDS uh, issues in the world, which we all know in this room is, is not the case, and many of the issues that have been brought up about inequalities uh, uh, speak to that. Uh, so there's a constant sort of pressure uh, on funding and on even priorities for research to move people who uh, are working in HIV, uh, move those dollars away from HIV to other areas of research that are perhaps parallel or related uh, when we haven't actually finished the job yet. So I think uh, that's a pressure I think many people in this room face uh, in terms of structuring their research programs, their thinking, and trying to find support for them. Uh, and I think there's an obvious, uh, it, it, I think it would be a shame because it's obvious that investment in HIV research in Canada has been historically uh, quite concentrated and focused, and uh, the result of that has been that we, as a research community, have punched above our weight, I think, globally uh, in HIV research, and I was a member of Chirac when a sort of evaluation of that was done at one point. Uh, it's quite clear that we do so. So I, th I think we have a constant pressure to maintain a focus uh, on HIV that's still warranted, not only because it will advance our ability to uh, address this epidemic in all the populations that need it, but also because of what HIV research has done as a model for uh, other, uh, addressing other important health problems and other chronic viral infections. Merci. Perfect, so we will move to the, uh, the next topic, the strength. So, from your perspective, what are the areas of strength with respect to HIV AIDS research in Canada currently? So, quelles sont les forces de la recherche canadienne en VIH SIDA présentement? On peut avoir une troisième intervention, si vous voulez. Euh, oui, non. <rire> voilà. I think we have a universal access of care, and that also helps a lot to have the strength to have a long-term cohort that doesn't exist in the US. And I think the ability to have a cohort and to have a prospective assessment for clinical outcome, for predictor marker, for immune response early and late, it's very key by having such infrastructure and access to care uh, is relatively easy. When we see a cohort uh, in US, they're very limited, they're time limited. Uh, so that's, I think, a big uh, strength. And uh, also, at provincial level, there is also some uh, structure of research. And to uh, collaborate between provincial and federal uh, level can sometimes be of uh, excellence. And I think that's uh, one. But now there is uh, another speaker. So I think that's a very important strength, cohort, long-term follow-up of participants. Merci. Yes, please. I have to stand on my toes. Um, one of the strengths I think that we have currently in Canada is the community-based research program. I think we're, we're internationally recognized for the work that we do. Um, I attended, um, my first international conference was in Australia and I was um, very humbled to hear from our indigenous colleagues globally um, that they look to Canada as an example of of what is possible and can we do better? Of course, absolutely. Um, we've learned that today, I think. Um, but yeah, community-based research. Perfect, thank you. So we have uh, one last question in this first section. Uh, what aspects of capacity building need to be developed to train the next generation of researchers, specialists in HIV, AIDS and STBBI? Les aspects de la capacité de recherche devons-nous développer pour former la prochaine, la prochaine génération de chercheurs en VIH, SIDA et ITSS au Canada. 
Any suggestion? We'll come back. You, you can, like I said earlier, come back to the booth and fill uh, in the, the survey. So we will go on the, um, the last section. It's now how to um, support the integrated approach to STBBI through the research agenda. Where, where do you see a synergy for research? Donc, dans le cadre d'une approche intégrée à l'égard des ITSS par l'entremise d'un programme de recherche au niveau de la recherche, où voyez-vous de la synergie? Oops, sorry. So, is there any synergy you see? Yes, please. Yeah, so I, I see uh, th there is a lot of synergy if we think from the syndemic framework or intersectionality framework. So there is a huge overlap um, in population groups that are affected by uh, HIV, hepatitis B or C or other SD BBIs. And it's just a matter of thinking through how we could understand these population groups in a better fashion and then understanding their care prevention and care needs and then tailoring programs accordingly. And that is a big area of work that we have not invested much in the past, but uh, given our healthcare system, we are poised to do a lot of novel things that are useful for the rest of the world, definitely for Canada, but also for the rest of the world. So uh, integrated STBBI research that could inform in optimal integration of care and services. And it's not only uh, specific to uh, uh, STBBIs beyond HIV. If you just think from the HIV perspective, uh, there is a need for integration of care for HIV as an infection, and then diseases of aging like cardiovascular disease and other non-communicable diseases. And that is also true for hepatitis C. That is true for hepatitis B. So we need to think about that point of view. And some research has been happening related to HIV and aging. But for hepatitis C and other STBBIs, we have not latched onto that. And that is an area that we need to work on. Thank you. Yes, please. Yes, there is a need to include the STBBI uh, into HIV research, but um, also don't forget uh, the stigma related to HIV. So it's also important to uh, have special uh, project only on HIV because uh, the stigma on STBBI is really less or not. maybe, I don't, I'm not sure if it's existing because STBBI can be treated and not uh, HIV yet. So be careful about that. Thank you. So we have one more question, the last one. In the context that it is uh, currently no additional resources, what are the research domains where an integrated strategy is a sensible approach? how to support the integrated approach to STBBI through the research agenda. It's uh, redundant maybe the last part, but it's, re it's really the, uh, the, you know, the, it's very important to know that. Donc, quel domaine de recherche une approche intégrée est-elle censée? Selon vous. I just wanted to add, so maybe we can also think in the reverse way, where does it not make sense if, if we want to take it in another level as well? So both way, where it makes sense, where does it not make sense? Thank you. Hi. Uh, Keith Oak, um, University of Manitoba and Chirac. Um, I think one of the areas to me where it makes a lot of sense is in um, early career development, so at the training levels. Um, in particular, um, you know, training um, 
young researchers to be aware of more than just one pathogen, uh, but to have more of a holistic uh, approach. Um, so having um, training programs that would address multiple um, different um, S, uh, STBBIs as well as HIV um, and um, supporting people early in their program, that builds on capacity that later on um, could flow into uh, um, operational grants and things. But I think first we've got to um, strengthen capacity um, at the basic level. Thank you. Yes. My name is Max Trubnikov. I work at Indigenous Services Canada. Um, I think uh, there is an opportunity uh, in um, looking at the um, areas where healthcare cap capacities are uh, underdeveloped and um, uh, bringing in examples from, uh, from Canada and uh, from other areas where um, work has been done in resource-limited settings um, in achieving comparable uh, clinical outcomes. Um, in, in terms of practical approaches, I would think um, um, looking at um, what, like if we are to um, accept that care is not equally uh, available in Canada and uh, what can be done about it um, is whether some work can be done on building community um, health representative capacities in training them to be um, you know aids or uh, supporters of um, uh, infectious disease dogs in managing or ma providing support to patients living in remote and isolated communities. Um, so that's one. Number two, I would think um, looking at um, um, case management as a key um, to uh, connecting the dots between connecting actually lives and um, you know, health outcomes across the continuum of care for people um, from the time uh, of exposure and, you know, um, becoming engaged in uh, testing through, uh, all the way through um, uh, the management of their um, chronic conditions. Um, number three, I would think it's, um, it's uh, looking at the ways, again, the integration, integration is the key, uh, is looking at ways how to bring in um, the popular term nowadays is disruptive technologies, but uh, ways of doing business more effectively or efficiently where um, savings can be found by um, eliminating some of the parts of, um, um, of the protocols or um, need to um, invest in um, um, parts of the process to get, you know, test results uh, or specimens saved and then transported um, and finding ways um, to implement at a larger scale um, 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 testing um, opportunities that would be uh, immune to um, disruptions in, in the cold chain, in, um, you know, um, electricity, um, lack of electricity, etc. Um, and um, you know, one one thing that um, also kind of um, um, if it's a if we speak uh, about the national strategy, national framework, um, you know. Um, I think there is an opportunity in trying to leverage of uh, investments that are made, already made uh, by, um, um, by other government departments in areas such as housing. You know, um, through my work, I hear that um, 
um, housing is not just about housing. Housing is about health uh, and ensuring health outcomes. So if you know, health uh, becomes a part of, and HIV uh, as a specific case becomes a part of a, decision-making models um, in other government departments in terms of how funding is allocated to support building housing or renovating housing or building social infrastructure for that matter. Um, I think there is an opportunity to, um, uh, to become more um, uh, proactive in addressing the social determinants in a way that is, um, that is evidence-based. Thank you. Thank you. You, you have a, a comment? Yes. Um, just one final thing. I mean, this question um, points out that there's currently no additional resources. And um, I would just go back to an earlier question, you know, what are the challenges? And one of the challenges is, is that um, we're being asked to do a lot more with the same amount of money. Um, and so I just wanted everyone to know that um, Chirac, which is the uh, committee that advises CHR on, on, um, on HIV issues, um, wrote a letter to the uh, Minister Pettipot Taylor saying that we're very supportive of this mission um, to incorporate STBBIs and, and HIV. It makes a lot of sense. Um, but that additional resources are needed so that we don't lose our current position as a leader in, in HIV. So I think one of the challenges is that, um, uh, that we're being asked to do many more things with the same number of dollars, which can only mean one thing, is that we're going to be able to have to do less in, in HIV. So I see that as a challenge, but also it's been raised at the highest level that, that we can, um, but I think that's something that um, needs to be um, recognized. Thank you. Thank you. Do you, do you want to uh, comment? No? OK. So, so um, uh, before, um, before the last uh, comments, I just want to uh, let you know that the slides will be available in French and English. So if you want to uh, get them, just come uh, visit us to the booth. Yes, I said it a lot. Um, and uh, we'll uh, take your email address and uh, we'll send uh, the, the slides uh, to you. Thank you. So we are cognizant of the time because the opening session is coming up soon. So uh, thank you very much for all your feedback. I'm a little surprised. I thought it would be a much more uh, animated discussion. <laughs> So I was uh, telling uh, Cecile that, you know, we'll have to manage time because there's going to be a lot of people wanting to say a lot of things. So uh, I realized that it's a first kick at the can. So if you stop by and tell us that the questions kind of sucked, we need to reframe the questions. That's okay, too. That's feedback, too. So let us know what you think. And uh, you've seen the questions. You've seen what the flavor of it is like. Uh, there's... Uh, 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 the survey, which is a little bit different from this, is uh, available at the, on the booth. So stop by and let us know and, you know, catch us uh, in the hallway and wherever you find us and uh, give us some feedback on what you think. Are we, uh, you know, are we asking the right questions or should we be redirecting even our questions? Uh, so that's important feedback. And then any other thoughts that you've had on what we've asked today? Uh, again, uh, participation is important because that's going to tell us what direction to go in. So the next steps that you can expect is that uh, we are going to put together an online survey based on your feedback from today. Uh, and uh, the questions that we have uh, sort of overall gathered uh, that we think will be important. And those will be put online. Uh, you will all get an invitation to participate in that. And then from there, we will be, uh, you know, doing more focus groups in different areas and inviting people. There might be some one-on-one uh, -on -one discussions as well for some of the uh, people who are leading some of the big teams, et cetera, on what their thoughts are. So, so we have a whole list of things that we have to go through. But at any time, please feel free to reach out to us and give us feedback. Uh, and we are available to listen to you and whatever your thoughts are. Uh, I'm happy to do it personally. Uh, Genevieve, Jessica, uh, Suzette, Natalie are here today. But uh, uh, Suzette and uh, Genevieve are part of the HIV team. We work together closely all the time. So any of us that you want to fire off an email, we'll be happy to respond back to you. 
so uh, with that, I'll stop and, uh, you know, uh, we'll let the uh, next session start up. But uh, please feel free to stop by and tell us what your thoughts are. Thank you.